Coming up on today's show, Elon Musk admits to dropping the ball on production ramp up for the newest Model X variants as customer deliveries are pushed back. Ford plans to severely punish dealerships who add massive markups to its electric vehicles by reducing their vehicle allocations. And as we approach Super Bowl Sunday, a slew of new electric vehicle ads break cover. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to Transport Evolve News, or TEN for short. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ding the bell, and I'll tell you how to support the channel later in the show. Today's show is sponsored by the Electric Vehicle Association. Join up to support the electrification of transport and get the help you need to finance your own clean energy or transportation future. During its Q4 2020 earnings report and call at the start of last year, Tesla revealed the refreshed Tesla Model S and Model X, as well as the Plaid performance versions of the same. Re-engineered almost from the ground up, they included a brand new interior, including a landscape center touchscreen and controversial yoke steering wheel, as well as drivetrain, battery pack and HVAC improvements to boot. Tesla began deliveries of the all new Model S Plaids last summer, but to date hasn't delivered many Model X. Customers have been patiently waiting for their new cars, but this week, Elon Musk confirmed in a series of tweets that Tesla is facing some issues with the production ramp up for the new Model X. The current bottleneck, according to Musk, who said that the Model X is the most complex passenger car ever, is the interior trim. If you are a Volvo fan, as several of us are at the channel, you'll be familiar with the Tuzlanda facility, home to one of Volvo's most iconic vehicles, the venerable Volvo 240. The 240 is long gone from its production lines, although an incredible number still survive on the roads nearly 30 years after ceasing production. But this week, Volvo announced a new chapter for the facility, committing to spending 10 billion kroner on turning the Gothenburg facility into a new EV manufacturing hub. At the heart of the investment is a major revamp to final assembly and paint shops, a brand new battery assembly facility, and massive new casting machines designed to cast aluminium body panels for future EVs. It seems Tesla's leadership in mega casting is catching on as automakers seek to improve efficiency without sacrificing safety. And that's really cool. As Nissan readies itself to begin series production of its Aria electric SUV, it's also finding increasingly tough emissions regulations in many countries mean that it no longer can realistically continue internal combustion engine development. To that end, we learned this week via Nikkei Asia that Nissan is reportedly in the process of becoming the first Japanese automaker to end development of new gasoline engines in most markets around the world, continuing to improve existing gasoline engines but ultimately phasing them out as bans on new ICE vehicles come into effect. But there's a catch. The US. That's because the US government has yet to commit to a ban on internal combustion engine vehicles. Nissan reportedly plans to continue to develop and sell internal combustion engine pickups and SUVs for the foreseeable future in the US. For a company that helped lead on EV for so long, it's now really sad to see Nissan fall behind. During Stellantis's EV Day last year, we learned that Ram would be bringing an all-new electric pickup to market, making it the last of the big three pickup makers to bring a plug to the party. This week, Ram launched a new website called Ram Revolution, a portal through which it intends to share details of what's going on with its electric pickup truck development. We know from previous dropped hints that the Ram 1500 will be built on the STLA frame BEV platform, a platform that includes dual motors up to 500 miles or 804 kilometers of range, and the same vehicle to X power backup capabilities as the Ford F-150 Lightning and Chevrolet Silverado EV. That's hardly a surprise given those two trucks are major rivals. But what we didn't expect was the news that a range extended version will also be offered at launch in 2024. It's a good idea to open up electrification to more customers, but I think many people will be upset about it.
Think of the world's largest battery producers for electric vehicles, and you might be tempted to think of Tesla and its battery partner Panasonic. After all, Tesla is producing and selling more electric vehicles in most of the world than anyone else. But new data from SNE Research shows that for the fifth year running, Chinese firm Cattle, which also supplies Tesla with massive amounts of battery cells, sat at the top of the global electric vehicle battery market, producing a whopping 96.7 gigawatt hours of battery cells last year. That's equivalent to 32.6% of the total EV battery market. In second place came LG Energy Solutions, producing 30.2 gigawatt hours, equivalent to 20.3% of the market. Market. Panasonic came in third place with 36.1 gigawatt hours of produced cell capacity, equivalent to about 12.2% of the market. It may have been in production for just a year, but Hyundai has already announced some pretty big changes to the Ionic 5 for the 2023 model year in Europe. Noticeable changes include a switch from the 72.6 kilowatt hour version of battery packs found in European spec Ionic 5s to a 77 kilowatt hour battery pack found in North American models. Combined with a new battery thermal preconditioning feature that heats up the battery pack prior to rapid charging, as long as you've set a rapid charger as your destination, this should make rapid charging quicker and improve overall driving range. Ionic 5 customers in Europe can also now opt to get a digital center mirror in the cockpit, as well as digital side mirrors in place of optical ones. This should reduce drag and further improve efficiency. Sadly though, North American customers can't get these yet, as they're not legal. One of the ways Tesla managed to gain such a leg up on the competition in the EV marketplace was its unique approach to rolling out engineering improvements to vehicles as and when they were ready, not just when a new model year started. And this week, we learned that, thanks to following Tesla's lead, Ford has managed to slash the cost of producing each Mustang Mark E by $1,000 per car. Talking to Automotive News this week, Darren Palmer, Ford's general manager of battery electric vehicles, said that Ford's approach to the Mark E has been to execute continuous improvements to its vehicle design. For example, it's managed to reduce the number of components for the Mustang Mark E Frunk from 9 to 2, dramatically reducing complexity on the car's cooling system and also making heated seats a standard fit item across all models, because it was not only cheaper from a parts perspective, but it also kept customers happy. As part of a massive new hiring push at its facilities around the world, Tesla has published a short video on LinkedIn promoting its brand new Giga Berlin facility. Focusing exclusively on the paint shop, which Elon Musk has said is the most advanced in the world, the video shows production line validation vehicles going through the paint shop as Giga Berlin edges ever closer to the start of series production. Yet while Tesla's factory looks ready to go, unconfirmed media reports from Germany suggest that Tesla's facility will not be allowed to operate until mid-March at the earliest. This is because it's not yet finished getting approval for various safety precautions and environmental impacts from the local Brandenburg government. You might be wondering why Tesla Giga Berlin is taking so long, especially when Giga Texas is so close to completion. And the answer is pretty simple. Texas has far less red tape and is far less concerned with environmental protections. As we reported a week ago, California startup Aptera has been busy putting its beta cars through handling tests in recent weeks, and up to this point has maintained that deliveries would begin this year. But this week, many Aptera reservation holders, including myself and Winter Tashlin, noticed that our reservation delivery estimates have slipped back to somewhere between 2023 and 2024. Aptera says it's still on track to start deliveries this year, but I'm guessing it will only be for the very earliest of reservation holders. The news is going to be a disappointment for some, but honestly, we think it's something that was going to happen anyway. We can't think of a single startup in recent memory that's managed to deliver its vehicles exactly when it initially said it would. And having talked to Winter about this very topic, I think that we're both kind of glad that the delay is taking place, as it should give Aptera more time to refine designs and engineering before production gets underway. As the chip shortage has gotten worse and more companies have struggled to produce enough vehicles to keep up with demand, there's been a sharp rise in the number of auto dealerships adding impossible markups to new cars. In recent weeks, we've seen some Ford dealerships really go to town with the markups for the upcoming F-150 Lightning. Some dealerships have added $10,000, $20,000 or even $30,000 over list price for the first people to order them. 
But this week, Ford CEO Jim Farley reiterated Ford's displeasure with this behaviour, essentially telling dealerships directly that any dealership caught adding unreasonable markups to any F-150 Lightning will deal with the repercussions. While auto dealer protection laws limit what Ford can do, the company says it will simply reduce the number of vehicles, aka allocations, that offending dealers get, essentially limiting the number of cars they will ultimately be able to sell. Ford says that about 10% of dealers have been charging markups, but hasn't detailed what it considers unreasonable in terms of markup costs. Coming up next, short shorts. But first, have you considered becoming a channel supporter? Well, we do fund the channel with supplemental income from third-party production work and white label content. The majority of our income comes from viewers just like you. Help us grow the channel from less than $1 a month via Patreon or via our new YouTube membership option. In exchange, you'll gain exclusive content from us and early access to all of our videos, like our recently released Polestar 2 video. And if you already do support us, thank you. On to the short shorts. As well as leading EV sales figures in most of the world, Tesla has been leading car sales in many markets full stop. This week got a new accolade. The Model Y is the best-selling compact SUV in California and the second best-selling car overall there in 2021. Harley-Davidson confirmed during its Q4 and 21 earnings call this week that its sale of the Livewire brand is expected to be completed in the first half of the year, with the first new Livewire motorcycles built using a new structural battery pack due to launch soon after. Electronic specialist Siemens has announced that it was responsible for helping Ford design and build the Ford Charge Station Pro for use with its upcoming F-150 Lightning pickup truck. The unit is the first to receive certification under a newly revised UL 9741 standard. Last year, we wept when Smart hinted at transitioning away from fun city cars to electric crossovers, and now we're aghast at Smart's decision to use a hashtag or sharp sign as part of the new model name system for its new vehicles. Expect database admins to cower in fear. The Irish government has relaunched its electric vehicle taxi scheme intended to help the nation's taxis transition to electric power. 15 million euro is earmarked for the programme this year and will help taxi companies and independent operators dump the pump. Norway may be known as the world leader when it comes to electric vehicle adoption, but a new report by Oil Change International shows the government's ramp-up of oil and gas licensing is incompatible with its stated green transportation goals. Fracking company Cordrilia has announced its intent to plug and abandon two fracking wells in the UK, marking the end of the UK's brief flirtation with shale fracking. The UK government no longer allows fracking in the UK, and we're frankly glad it's now banned. The state of California has sued Tesla for what it says is a racially segregated workplace at its Fremont facility. It documents workers, managers and supervisors using racial slurs against black colleagues. Tesla denies the claims, calling them, quote, counterproductive. Xpeng has continued its expansion into the European marketplace by announcing new sales service and distribution partnerships in the Netherlands and Sweden. It says its first retail stores in the Netherlands and Sweden will open up by the end of this quarter. The state of California has become the first state in the US to register more than one million plug-in vehicles on its road. Florida sits in second place with 58,000 plug-in vehicles registered. That said, California is by far bigger than Florida when it comes to its population. The Australia Institute's Carmichael Centre has said that Australia could transform and reinvigorate its automotive industry if it only embraced electric vehicles. In a new report, it says Australia has everything it needs in the country to build EVs and their battery packs from scratch. Alan Clark, one of Tesla's top executives in charge of new vehicle programs, including being chief engineer for the new Tesla Roadster, has left the company to go and work at Ford. In his new position, he will be focusing on helping expand Ford's EV lineup. A proposed amendment to the Wisconsin Electric Vehicle Bill would ban government entities from owning or leasing electric vehicle charging stations, and it would only allow charging stations to charge for electricity coming from utility companies, not on-site power generation. It could stunt EV charging development across the state. 
Startup Volterio and parts manufacturer Continental have unveiled a new charging robot designed to allow cars to be automatically charged without requiring the driver to plug in. Consisting of a floor-mounted unit, the charger connects to the underside of the vehicle. DS Automobiles has unveiled a prototype vehicle that hints at the future of the brand when it goes all electric in 2024. Called the E-Tense Performance, it features all-wheel drive, incredible performance and Formula E-derived power electronics. A new report from Bloomberg has correlated EV sales in the US with the election results of the last presidential election. It shows that 76% of EV sales in 2021 came from states that voted for President Biden over former President Trump. Hydrofoil company Navia has successfully completed its seed financing round with 7.2 million US dollars in the bank. It is seeking funds to bring its N27 electric hydrofoil to market. The N27 is already sold out for its first year of production. Israeli firm Electrion, which specializes in inductive charging for electric vehicles, has joined the CCS initiative known as Charin. Its network focused on global standardization of electric vehicle charging as adopted by automakers around the world. Subaru has officially opened up the reservation books for its Solterra electric vehicle. It's based on the same platform as the Toyota BZ4X, but like the Toyota, the Solterra will initially only be available in compliance car markets in North America. Ford has officially begun deliveries of its e-transit to companies and individuals across the US. The majority of orders for the first all-electric transit were to large companies, but Ford reassures that a wide variety of businesses have placed orders for the all-electric panel van. Tesla has been told by Nitsa to disable the boombox feature on its cars where custom sounds can be played via the pedestrian warning speakers in customers' cars. Nitsa says the boombox obscures mandatory pedestrian warning sounds that are required for all EVs. The same week that President Biden finally acknowledged Tesla's part in America's EV production output, the US DOT and US DOE have announced a $5 billion spending package to establish a nationwide network of fast charging stations for EVs. Leaked images from inside Ford's latest iteration of its Ford Pass Connect app suggest that Ford is readying a new feature for use with its F-150 Lightning that is similar to the summon feature on Tesla's EVs. It could make it easier to park the massive truck. Para Mobility has confirmed an all-electric KTM e-Duke is on its way to production. Right now, however, the specifications don't look all that good. It's got a maximum power of 10 kilowatts and just 5.5 kilowatt hours of onboard battery capacity. Faraday Future has confidently announced a new partnership with the South Korean firm for the series production of the FF81 electric car. The FF81 hasn't even broken cover yet, and given how long the FF91 is taking to reach production... Don't hold your breath. Documentation submitted to NHTSA as part of Tesla's recent software update to remedy poor heating performance of some Model 3 and Model Y cars in cold weather lays the blame at the feet of communication interruptions with the electronic expansion valve in the heat pump system of affected cars. Nikola Motors is back in the headlines after all of its supply chain executives left in quick succession. The company disputes that things are looking dire and says that it, quote, intentionally strengthened its supply chain with new hires. But we are talking about Nikola here. While nearly everyone at the channel is a fan of manual transmission cars, the age of the EV has helped eradicate the popularity of the stick shift. But apparently Toyota has filed a patent to produce an EV with a pseudo-clutch pedal and a pseudo-shifter. We're not entirely sure why. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. As more and more Tesla owners gain access to Tesla's full self-driving beta software, we're seeing more and more examples of the system out and about in the real world, often in the form of video clips. Some of those clips are exemplary of the best parts of Tesla's technology, showcasing FSD beta help preventing accidents or keeping other road users safe. But in the past week, we've seen a fair number of truly scary videos come online showing the exact opposite. One this week showed a Tesla FSD beta system collide with a bollard, while another shows an FSD beta system veer suddenly towards a cyclist. A third shows the system failing to properly navigate busy intersections, often with potentially dangerous outcomes. 
But we are not going to comment on our own views here, that's for another video, but we do all feel it's a good time to remind folk that FSD Beta, as Tesla explains, is not autonomous nor infallible. Anyone using it needs to use good judgment as when to use it and when not to turn it off, and their hands need to be on the wheel ready to intervene at every opportunity. And finally, it's Super Bowl Sunday this weekend in the US, which means lots of money, and I do mean lots of money, will be spent by companies seeking to advertise their products to the captive Super Bowl audience. As usual, there's a lot of car ads, and we've already got a sneak peek at some of them. As we mentioned in the show a few weeks ago, Kia is bringing a robotic dog to co-star alongside its EV6 in its Super Bowl slot, while Polestar promises its Super Bowl ad will be free of gimmicks, celebrities and animals, among other things. Meanwhile, BMW is teasing a Super Bowl slot for its iX electric SUV, featuring none other than Arnold Schwarzenegger playing the part of the god Zeus. But perhaps the one that got our attention most was an Austin Powers-themed spot from GM involving Dr. Evil and his henchmen. It's certainly a funny ad, but I think GM probably misses the irony of choosing Dr. Evil for this particular ad. All I can say? Keep your eyes peeled for a special ad deconstruction with Matt Teske from Chargeway next week. And on that note, we are done for the day. But before I go, a huge thank you to the Electric Vehicle Association for sponsoring today's show. They've been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967 and firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean green electric cars today. The EVA can help you find someone near to you that can help you make your own switch to electric. It can help you become an EV educator and it can point you in the direction of monthly meetups for like-minded EV fans. And if you become a member, you'll gain access to a brand new clean energy and EV loan program set up between the EVA and the Colorado Clean Energy Credit Union. You can find out more by heading to electricauto.org. Don't forget to hit subscribe and the bell for this channel and our second channel, Transport Evolved Take Two. And if you're not already a channel member or Patreon supporter, please consider becoming one, or you can send us a tip through Kofi, Bitcoin, or buying something from our cool swag store. I'll be back soon with more content on the channel, so enjoy your weekend, and as always, keep evolving!